Another example, uh, and this is about the partial close, uh, why I prefer uh, to close just part of my trade, not the whole trade. Um, I'm not sure if all brokers and all platforms allow you to close a percentage, uh, but it might, in my opinion, uh, it's good to close just a percentage because uh, that way, for example, you're protecting yourself, you're closing 70% here of this uh, trade. Just a, a few words about the backstory. Uh, we had a very severe reaction from here. You can see uh, how the price dropped. Uh, although I wrote that this uh, resistance area, it is actually, um, if I'm not mistaken, a uh, supply area, uh, which is a bit different. We haven't talked about that, about uh, supply and demand levels. Uh, they kind of act, actually they act as resistance or support areas, but uh, are a bit uh, different to define. You can read up on the internet about them. However, the idea is that if the price retraces here, I expect to see uh, a bounce from that area. You can see that this happens. I take this entry and I close 70% of my position here. As you can see, the price started to make higher, uh, higher lows and at the same time higher highs. So maybe we have a reversal. It's better to just play it safe, take part of your profits and you can just, uh, yeah, the higher lows. And you can just move your stop loss at break even. That way, you've taken uh, most of your uh, profits and the rest 30%, if you're lucky, the price will just continue down, down, down and continue uh, making you profits. But if the price goes back up as it did, you won't be uh, telling to yourself, oh, why I didn't close here. Now I'm, the price is already back at my entry point. And at that point, um, the markets will influence you psychologically. You start to doubt yourself. Uh, you most likely close your trade somewhere here on a small loss. Uh, and then try to start buying maybe, um, hoping that this will continue and you know the mess will happen. And that way, you're just, uh, you know, you're free of risk. You took your profits, the, le the rest 30% or 20 or 50, it really depends how much you want to close. Uh, are, you're not going to lose with them. And at the same time, you free up uh, some margin. So for example, if you took, uh, let's say, 70 euro of profit here, if you had 100 euro trade, those 70 euro are you can use them for a risk-free trade, like, for example, here. You see this square, a huge break of it, and then you decide to risk that uh, 70 euro you took. It doesn't matter. You might lose, you might win. But if you win, you can add up to that 70 euro. If you lose, you're at zero. No problem. In this case, you should have won. Why? Because you should have placed your stop loss above that broken area. So as you can see, the price never reached it and continued down. <clears throat> now, I drew this today. <laughs> it's not the best. But uh, if I start drawing on uh, a chart about partial closes of multiple trades, uh, it will be a mess. So I decided to do it like that. And I'll try to explain it. And if you have any questions, uh, you can ask ask me right after that. So this is, you have a downtrend here. Why closing part of your position is so powerful instead of closing the whole position? You have a downtrend here uh, during which you take multiple trades. So here is your first entry. And for example, you close 70% here. You have the stop loss of your first entry over here above uh, this. So Let's imagine it's a top there. <laughs> and you close 70% or 50 or 80, doesn't matter here. At that point, you can see you can move your, uh, actually, you can keep, for example, for a while your stop loss there, hoping that, uh, not hoping, sorry, uh, thinking, not, 
it's not the best way to say thinking, uh, inclining on your trading plan <laughs> to know, uh, and you know that most likely this downtrend will continue, at least that's your trading plan. And even if your stop loss is hit over here, no problem, you close 70%, even with that loss, you'll still be in profit with that trade. So you leave your stop loss there. Here you see another top being formed and uh, you believe that the downtrend will continue. You take another trade, you put your stop loss above this uh, top, above this high, and you move the stop loss of the first trade on it. So basically of those 30 or 40% left from the first trade. That way, even if the price here reverses, uh, your first trade won't lose anything, it will be around zero, and only your uh, second trade will lose, but you already took some profits from the first, so again, uh, you balance things. But the price continues in your favor, makes a, a lower low, again, you take some percentage here, the price goes up, moves further down, you take another trade, again, you take 70% here, while at the same time moving your stop losses from the previous trades that you still have open on the market to the last stop loss of the last trade. And you can see uh, before the market reverses, you already have five trades uh, here about the risk. You can take this trade with a lot higher risk than you can take this trade, but still you have to try. I mean, you don't know where this downtrend will end. You have to continue entering or looking for positions until you're sure that a reversal has already happened and you can just switch sides after that. It's a clear example just to follow your strategy and uh, continue trading with it. Yes. Uh, so in this case, you take trade number five here. Uh, the price makes a lower low, but this previous low here is quickly broken. This is a closing sign -all. You close 70% of your position around zero. And as you can see, the stop loss is here where uh, later the price hits it. But so you lose 30% on this posi position, which can be a very, very small amount because you took this trade with a lot less risk. So for example, if you took that with 100 euro, you took that with five euro. And you close 70% of that five euro, so how much is that? 150, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so you lose 1.50 euro here. But all those four trades before that, you moved uh, that stop loss here, which now actually is not a stop loss, but it is more like a take profit already, since your entries are way uh, before that. So all those trades are closed at the same time as well but making you, for example, this trade a profit from here to over here, the, he, uh, this one from here to over here, this one from here to over here, and this one from here to over here. So you lost 1.50 euro here with that trade, but you probably made, I don't know, more than 100 euro with the first, 50 or 60 euro with the second, 30 with the third, and so on and so on. So you're in a lot, lot more profit. The point of uh, partially closing your trades is to um, maximize your profits. You're building uh, like a pyramid of trades on a certain trend, which might continue for a few days, but it might continue for a few years. Why not have a position here and in two years to close it in huge amounts of profit, or at least the part of it which are is still left on the market. While at the same time you're not risking anything because your stop loss is either at break even, so at zero, or at some profit. Uh, that method of stacking up trades uh, can turn out to be extremely profitable, and especially if you catch a nice move and you manage to stack up a few trades. Uh, those are the trades that actually uh, make a trader win money. Usually you'll be balancing between small wins, small losses here and there, maybe zeros at the end of the month. If you, uh, that's why Value will told you, tell you about uh, a little bit about trade journal and to keep track of your trades. But the idea is that most of your trades, when you sum up everything, you'll be at a small plus, small minus, or around zero. 
the big money comes from those trades. So remember that, try to exploit the market, try to maximize your profit, but at the same time, minimize the, the losses by minimizing the risk, depending on where you are, or uh, by closing or by putting uh, stop loss, trailing stop loss or uh, break even, etc. Uh, just a few words now. You already uh, learned how to manage your trade and how to make some profits. Now, what to do with those profits? Well, you can uh, withdraw them and just go spend them to a bar. But if you're starting with a small account, uh, you need those profits to stay in there if you want to grow your account. If you want to just keep a small account and make a few bucks here and there every month, it's okay, but if you want to grow it over time, you need to keep those money in. That's why you shouldn't risk uh, money you cannot afford to lose because on one side, you have all the money you need in order to live and uh, not change your lifestyle. And at the same time, you don't need the money from the market you make. And that way you can pile them up by building, uh, in order to build a higher bankroll and then make even more money of your trades at one point. And at that point, you can become an autonomous trader. Uh, so what to do with that money? There are two things actually you can do with them, except the one where you withdraw them and go to a bar to spend them. Either reinvest your winnings so uh, this means to make your portfolio of uh, investments bigger or you can gamble with them, depends how you feel. Uh, we talked a bit about that in the previous presentation, so I'm not going to go into too much details, but this is the pyramid Pascal showed you a few presentations ago, as far as I remember. Uh, mine is a little bit different. It is starting from uh, the bottom to the top. His is starting from the top to the bottom, but... Uh, you know, depends how you like it. The idea is that uh, you should always try to relocate your winnings. They shouldn't be placed in only one thing. Uh, this is, um, this can work quite positive, not only on the markets, but in life. If you're doing some business, you should know it. So let's say you have 100% winnings. Doesn't matter what, what the amount is. It can be 10 euro, it can be 10,000 euro. What I do is define three different, so to say, investment zones. The first one is the safest one, where I will allocate uh, most of my income from the market, at least 70%. This zone, uh, for me, is the, tra uh, the trading strategy I use and I used to make that 100%. This is the safest investment for me because I believe I'm a um, profitable trader. So I, am, I feel uh, comfortable allocating most of my winnings into uh, future trades. Even if they're losing once, I'll lose only winnings. I won't lose my in uh, initial capital. Then we have a bit uh, higher. Uh, actually, I just want to add here that those, this area is either your trading strategy or it can be savings if you want to uh, save that amount. So take 70% out of your winnings and just put them aside. Either trade your strategy with them or put them aside for rainy days or whatever. Uh, then we have the middle area, which is a lower risk investments. Uh, here, I would add things that I uh, know about, I understand them, so maybe other markets, maybe uh, I would like to start investing on the uh, stocks market or commodities market or indexes, but I'm not that good on those markets, I don't have that good strategy on them, that is why I am allocating a smaller percentage of my winnings there, and since I have some knowledge from the forex market, I actually might turn that 20% into some good profits. I might lose them, but that doesn't care. I haven't lost uh, the bigger part of my winnings. On a market, I don't understand that well. Uh, of course, here it can be cryptocurrency, it can be short-term investment, it can be long-term investment. You can just invest them on a, in a company uh, you believe in. 
for example, uh, buying their stocks and just leaving uh, your position open for a very long time, maybe with small leverage, and just to keep uh, you know, piling up uh, some profits. And the last, uh, the top actually of the pyramid in this case, is the high risk investments or gambling. Now, trading can be quite uh, exhausting and at one point you start to feel like your brain will explode. And you, hit, you need to uh, take out that steam somewhere to do something, uh, you know, to get out of those, uh, how to say, rules. Yeah, uh, more like um, the rounds of the painting. I forgot the English word for it. <laughs> uh, okay, it doesn't Let's matter. Let's say borders. Yeah, okay, so get out of the borders because if you're trading correctly, I'll go a bit back, but if you're trading correctly, you have to follow the cycle. I sh uh, that's a lot of back. Okay. <laughs> you have to follow that cycle. So here are your borders. You shouldn't get out of them at any time if you want to be profitable. But at some point you decide, ah, come on, the market was good to me this month, or doesn't matter even if it was you won last month and you have lost uh, for a while now this month and you're feeling frustrated and you just want to take it out on the market. Uh, you can go and invest 10% uh, of your winnings into sort of a gambling. It's not exactly gambling because you're still investing that money on a market you already know. But uh, you're investing them without much thought, without creating that trading plan, without uh, constantly watching for an entry. You can just, for example, if this 10% is 100 euro, you just go and open five trades of 20 euro randomly. Doesn't matter, you don't uh, make a support, you don't make a resistance, you don't do anything, you just open a trade. You see, it's an uptrend, obviously you can uh, define that by just watching at the chart without using any indicators or technical tools. And you just say, okay, I'll just open 10 trades or five trades each 20 euro, buy trades in that uptrend. They can work out, they might not. It doesn't matter, you will lose only 10% of your winnings, but you can win a lot more with that trades because if this uptrend continues for a very long time, you know, you can make some good money with a high risk investment. Also, uh, those 10% can be used to test some new strategies uh, you learned about over the internet or uh, you figure it out by yourself or uh, you want to learn how to scalp since it's a more intense way of trading and it's a bit harder. I wouldn't invest uh, <clears throat> my bigger winnings into scalping. I would invest uh, small ones until I build, uh, you know, uh, better strategy for scalping, a profitable one, which will take at least a few months. And then I, I can actually, at that point, that uh, market, that way of trading scalping will come over here. It won't be on the top anymore because you already understand it. You know how to, how to profit with it, so you can just place it here and invest those 20% into that scalping strategy. But while testing your strategy, just invest those 10%, not more. Now, Value uh, has to tell you, that's all. Any questions so far regarding uh, the closes of a trade or the re relocating uh, your winnings, etc.? Um, I have a question about the, the difference in estimating your profit in pips and percentages. So, how is it possible that you are, say, making a loss on pips but making profit on, on percentages? <laughs> Uh, you mean about the newsletter I talked about where, uh, well, actually pretty easy. Uh, for example... During the, the time that you're trading, uh, you still have some winning trades. And uh, now Ilan will tell you more about it, but uh, if you, uh, if you lo locate uh, the trades with less probability to be profitable, with uh, less amount, uh, the losses there will be less and the winnings from the other trades will be more. And in this way, 
you're able to generate more profit from uh, less amount or from less number of trades, which in the end will generate your profit overall. Right. So you're saying that this is percentage profit from multiple trades, as opposed from from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You cannot from get like two yeah. trades. You have to have like. Uh, Actually, trades. I think it was on the euro, Japanese yen currency pair. So this trade was taken with 1% investment. It lost, my stop loss was hit. So I lost that 1%. Uh, I had a second trade here. Uh, my entry was here, although you don't see it on that graph. Again, the stop loss was placed here, it was hit. Again, this trade was taken with 1%. So I am already on a 2% loss. While at the same time, uh, this first one, as far as I remember, was 30 pips, and the second, uh, no, actually this one, uh, they're close to each other. No, this trade was taken a bit higher here, it sounded perfect, so it was, uh, the loss was 30 pips, and on the second one was 40 pips, so a total of minus 70 pips and minus 2%. Then I took a third trade on that pair, which was taken over here, after this uptrend channel was broken. Uh, by the time I took the trade on the M30, uh, the price went a bit up, but I was uh, quite certain that this reaction from the H4 resistance area over here, the top of the range, is very strong and most likely uh, the range will continue. So I had a lot of room uh, down for the, uh, the pair to make a lot of profit. And actually, I took this trade with 2%. And my stop loss was placed above here somewhere, if I remember correctly. Although, uh, the price, you can see, retraced back inside this sort of a square here it formed. Uh, you cannot see it here, but after that, we had a... On the next day, actually, it was. This is Thursday, so on Friday, if I'm not mistaken, last week. Uh, we had a strong move down. The price reached the middle uh, area of the range. Uh, then it hesitated for a while. I was monitoring it in order to close my trade and uh, take some profits or at least a percentage of my trade. But the middle area was broken and uh, by the end of Friday, uh, the price, I'm not sure if it was here, but it doesn't matter. The price actually reached the bottom uh, the bottom of the range. So I took a trade at the top of the range and closed it at almost at the bottom. Uh, and since this is an H4 range, the difference was huge. And those 2% actually uh, made me a profit of 4.18, something like that in percentage. So it covered those 2% which I lost and I was on a plus uh, two point something percent. But it also covered the 70 pips actually, but I had another losing uh, trade on a different currency pair, which uh, if you count all the three uh, losing trades, the pips, uh, there they were for example 150, and from this trade I won 130 pips, so I was on a minus 20. But on the three trades before that, I lost 3%, and on this one, I won 4.18. So I was on a plus 1.18%. And uh, now I'm going to tell you a uh, quick something about the training journal. So basically, it's, uh, it's on the other way, actually. Yeah. Uh, so basically, it uh, doesn't matter, spreadsheet in Excel, uh, whatever you like, uh, just... Uh, keep a track on your trading plans and your trades. Uh, you just uh, uh, put them there, write them, all of them. You have to know that uh, it's very important for you to write all of them because sometimes if you miss only one trade and it turns out to be uh, very profitable or very losing one, this may affect your whole trading performance. And in a way, if you just uh, miss this one and uh, don't observe it, uh, in the future you can miss a lot of profit in a something that you can actually realize, or you can, this could cause you a lot of losses for something that you're not monitoring. So this is what actually uh, looks like the spreadsheet. You just uh, keep a track uh, on your trades, write your entry point, stop loss, take profit, quick comment what you do, and uh, in the best case scenario, you can uh, take screenshots uh, on the chart in order to remember 
uh, perfectly what the tray was. This is not necessary because sometimes it's uh, very annoying, but uh, if you want, you can do it. Uh, so when you do have this spreadsheet, you can very easily monitor your mistakes. You'll see a pattern. Uh, whatever you see, like uh, you could be uh, you're entering into a position and your stop loss is uh, hitting all the time. So maybe you can see that uh, you're not putting your stop loss correct. Or you're entering into positions and you see that uh, whenever they reach a profit, they're continuing. So this means that probably you should uh, take more attention to this, uh, where this trend could continue and uh, how you can maximize your profit from this. So in a way, when you see your uh, mistakes like this, it's very easy to monitor them. And uh, the next thing is to find and fix them. When you fix your mistake and fix what's broken, this is going to, uh, let's say, develop your trading strategy. And uh, of course, with it, uh, there are coming less losses and more winnings. This is very important for every trader because sometimes uh, something that you're not paying attention and it seems uh, small for you, uh, in the long run, it could uh, just uh, drag you down and hold you back and uh, be a problem for your future development. The next thing, of course, as you see, it's maximizing the profit and uh, minimizing the losses. I already mentioned to you quickly, but um, here it's uh, very important to look as well uh, in what trades you're winning and in what trades you're they're losing. I already mentioned that sometimes the losing trades are due to bad luck. You open a trade, something happens, you lose money. We all been there. But uh, when you do the tracking with the trading journal, you know that uh, probably certain sector is not applicable to your strategy. And even if you continue open trades there, you can have bear, you can like bear in mind that you should do it with uh, less investment, investment. And in this way, you're gonna protect your main capital. And if you continue losing there, you lose less. And for the maximizing of the profit, you should know that uh, when you're tracking your trades, of course, you can see that uh, in certain sectors, you're uh, generating a lot of winnings. And uh, it's uh, happening very easy for you. So this could give you the idea that probably when you see something uh, like this in your trading journal, whenever you see a new opportunity, you should push harder there, uh, invest more, risk more, and in order to maximize your winnings in this way. Pretty much uh, there was everything that I wanted to mention. If you want to add something here. Uh, maybe just to tell you that uh, by using a trading journal, you should always um, also <clears throat> take screenshots of your trades when you enter, maybe some update of it, or when your stop loss is hit or take profit is hit. That way you can uh, define the bigger losers of your trades. So for example, you build a database of 100 trades and let's say 10 of them are losing you a lot. So in, this case, in the case, it will be your stop loss being hit because that's like the most you can lose. If you close it earlier, you won't lose that much. You have to go back and check those trades in order to, as value set, define if you're making a sa the same mistake over and over again. Of course, uh, some of those 10 trades will be just because bad luck happened. But I'm quite certain that you will find the pattern in at least 50% of them. A similar mistake you did on all of them. And when you remove that mistake from your trading, next month, instead of 10 losing trades, you have only five, which means more profit for you. And uh, yeah, pretty much that was everything for the presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. We are here for you. I have one question about the trailing uh, stop loss. Yeah. How does it look like? Ah, it's not a long Uh, the thing that uh, I can tell you here is that uh, sometimes the platform, depending on the broker that you're using, uh, can do it automatically. For example, you can say that uh, your stop loss is uh, 30 pips. So whenever the price starts to go up, automatically, for example, if you're making uh, 10 pips, it will move it for 
the initial 30 to 20 from the entry point. So it can do it automatically for you. And it can, it's actually on the most platforms I saw it, it's called uh, floating stop loss. So basically it means that whenever the price is going on an uptrend, let's say, it moves your stop loss uh, with the price or with a certain um, buffer. I think it's a cushion or whatever. It, uh, it moves it. it with the same amount the price moves. So if those are 50 pips, your stop loss will be moved with 50 pips up. This is auto. Yeah, does it move down as well? No. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That's a disadvantage of the trailing stop that it doesn't move down. Yeah, but you don't want it. To, you don't want it to move down because in a certain area like uh, here, uh, you want it to be uh, in a way of your take profit. So you're not monitoring the position, and the price is starting to go against you. And uh, whenever it reaches the floating stop loss, uh, it will close your position and you can uh, generate the profit there. This is in a way that you're not putting your um, take profit, you leave your uh, position to grow. And uh, whenever the doubt trend uh, started, uh, actually it will close it automatically for you. This is the idea. Yeah, the, the main point I added, I never use trailing stop loss to be honest. I added it yeah, so too. you know what it is. But the main idea of a trailing stop loss is for traders that uh, cannot watch the markets during the day. That way you want, for example, if your stop loss is here, you're not watching the market for a day or two or three. You know, you're, you have entered here, the price moves here, and let's say uh, if we erase everything after that, the price from here reverses and goes down and hits your stop loss. I would close after this stop is broken, so somewhere here, and I still would be in profit, but if you're not watching the trade for a few days, it can easily go to your stop loss, and instead of you winning or being around zero or even losing, but very small amount, you will lose your whole investment here. And the trailing stop loss, you know, this move happened, the trailing stop loss will move here, so even if the price reverses from here, you will be at around zero, so, so you're okay. Basically, it will move like this, like uh, this is your entry point. It will move like like, like a range. Uh, all right, so if price uh, goes down, then stop loss stay there, stays there, right? Yeah, yeah it's on the, last, uh, on the last trade. That's an issue, but if you are watching the markets constantly, you, you don't need the trailing stop loss. If you're not watching them, it's better for you to have that, that trailing stop loss, even if it doesn't move down, because one very important thing, actually, I forgot to mention, is that never, never, never change the place of your stop loss. Once you place it, leave it there. Don't change it. That's one of the biggest mistakes, uh, especially beginner traders make, to move their stop loss. So, for example, I placed it here in this case. Let's say the price reversed, went to here, then I got scared, so I move it from here to down here. And then the price continues down, and I continue moving it down. You can keep doing that if you have an unlimited amount of money in order to cover all the losses, because at one point, you know, the market will reverse and it will go back to your entry point or even further up and make you some money. But if you don't yeah, have... Tell this, uh, tell this to the investors in Lemon Brothers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you don't have an unlimited amount of money, Never move your stop loss because you've defined the area where you put your stop loss based on your knowledge and your trading uh, techniques and your trading approach. And you know that if the market returns to it, it will continue further down. And there is no point to lose a lot more instead of just losing some, uh, you know, percentage or whatever and continue looking for uh, profitable opportunities to... Uh, get back what you lost and make even more. So very important rule. <laughs> Any other questions? No, okay. So this was it regarding our it, master class. Thank you for being part of it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, you can always contact us on Facebook or you can send us an email. Uh, we'll do our best to answer your question. If we don't know it, we are going to check it on the internet and still answer you, so don't worry about it. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys.